Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. Welcome, adventurers, to a realm beyond your wildest imaginations, where the secrets of Knocked Prone come to light. Each week, we'll take a peek behind the DM screen and find out what could have happened had the players taken a different path. Behind the screens, we'll have weekly to bi-weekly episodes on our Patreon. So make sure that you're supporting us over on patreon.com forward slash knocked if you'd like to hear more episodes like this. Episode 2 of Behind the Screens is already up on our Patreon, so make sure to go check that out. This is Behind the Screens with your host, Alec. This week, I'm joined by... Danny, who played Tess, Yui, Kelrick, and Kobo. Marissa playing Ephemia, Orcus... Celine, Zag, <laughs> Sarkel. You have a huge range of voices. You didn't know it was me the whole time, did you? Yeah, Marissa and I have very similar voices. I just don't talk in that inflection very often. So. <laughs> good try, good try. Kate. And Brooklyn playing Celine and Litzy. And Cade, who DM'd uh, both campaigns. Our question for today is What if the champions of Greyhaven stayed working for Ascended Corp? Let's Ooh. start with let's start with the players. How do you foresee that decision would have changed the campaign? So, off the top of my head, the first thing that comes to my mind is that we probably would have made more money. <laughs> that oh, is actually that's very true. valid. We were, more money. Yeah. They were paying yeah. us really quite well. well, an exponential amount. And actually. and we were able to kind of like negotiate our pay. I feel like if we would have kept doing jobs for them, that probably would have had bad results in the long run. They probably would have had us doing some pretty bad, dirty work. But we would have had a lot of bad cre- bad land credits, and who knows what that would have got us. You could have bought both of the blue spaces in Monopoly. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, and revivify, yo. I mean, I know that, I like... I could have done it so many more times. Yeah. I, I Like, Grom totally got us some good cash. That's huge. But I'm just saying, we definitely would have had some moolah. I agree. Speaking of, though, if you would have stayed with Ascended Corp, Spark L would have been probably, uh, instead of being destroyed, she would have been, like, literally transitioned into a heal bot that would have had something like Revivify on stock a number of times per day. So basically mm. you're yeah, saying yeah, you we would have been rich and had unlimited healing from our best friend. Yes. But, but we instead also would be you strengthening chose justice. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, but we would I also be that. strengthening our enemy. I am absolutely <laughs> playing chaotic evil next campaign. <laughs> now that you say that, obviously we would have had more money. We would have potentially had a better outcome for Sparkale. Let's think long term. Had we stayed with Ascended Corp and worked for them and continued to do jobs, what do you think the end of our campaign would have looked like as compared to now? Which, for listener reference, right now we are in the middle of the finale battle in Greyhaven as we record this. That's a good point. The mission you guys stopped on was to kill or capture the who's the Mawetza brothers? Uh, Daga brothers. Daga brothers. Daga brothers. So uh-huh. let's just put it in that framework and how that your relations with the Underdark slash the mine area, that would have changed the entire relations with the region. So I was just going to like place that formatting, send you off. Oh yeah. Ophemia, you want to you wanna kill me, you said? Oh, uh, I thought we were going to be on the like same team. It's nothing personal. <laughs> It's just I get a lot of money in heel bot. <laughs> I, I mean, on that note, I think that it could have really gone a lot of different ways. Honestly, like if we had continued doing jobs with them, we could have just continued screwing over relations. But honestly, I think at least from my character's point of view, Ephemia would have kept doing it 
because she Avani, was being like strung along. Yeah, Avani was holding the information about where her mom was over her head, and it turns out she didn't really know that much. Um, so that was that. I think that would have gotten really interesting, but at the same time, I think at the end of it, uh, Ephemia would have just been even more pissed off. It makes me wonder if Zag and Grom. Okay, so mate. Mason and Alec played different types of characters, okay? Mm-hmm. That weren't himbos, for one thing, but didn't have the same moral standing that maybe other characters have. We very well could have, because I think it was Grom's attachment to the Underdark and to that area, as well as Zag's, like, I don't want to kill people early on. I mean, I've killed a ton of people now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, early on, I was trying to be more of a pacifist support character. Me and Mason were playing characters that kind of contradicted the, the the missions we were given. Had we played different characters, I don't think it's crazy to think that we would have stayed with Ascended Corp. I think Marissa, oh, sorry, Ephemia would have done it, considering the, like, little bits of information she was giving, yeah. as well as Celine. Absolutely, and I would have also liked to see uh, Zag on a date with Avani, just like the party walk in on that. <laughs> that was the, that was probably the most chaotic decision I made. I know I made a lot. <laughs> that was the most. I chaotic. want you all to know that was in the that second. Was the that best wasn't in the moment. That ever wasn't. Had. That wasn't in the moment or like in the day that I thought of that. It was like I'm gonna have a crush on her in like and the I second that she said something. <laughs> It's interesting to think that had the party dynamic been different, I actually think us staying with Ascended Corp would not be out of the question. No, I I agree with that entirely. Because they gave us a lot of things that most characters would like. Money and information. I wondered if Cade was trying goals. to double trick us because the whole like <laughs> big corporate thing that like it just seemed so like secretly, but secretly big, bad. a charity. Yeah, well, like, just like straight out the gate, it just almost seemed a little too obvious they were going to be the bad guys. And obviously it did have more depth in the end. But I was like, maybe he is double tricking us and these really are the bad guys. and Or they really are the good guys and the bad guys are like just lurking among us, you know? So I, I totally could see myself going with them in the end. The way he presented the veiled grin, they kind of seemed sketchy too. Mm-hmm. On there purpose. wasn't There wasn't there a very no clear... Clear cut answer. Yeah. I didn't want well, that. And I hated war before, too. War was my yes. enemy, and he was a part of the Veiled Grip. That was like part of your motivations yeah. as a character was war to kill him. War was one him. of the leaders of the Veiled Grip. Yeah. Had we made that decision to stay with Ascended Corp, regardless of why, where do you think we'd be right now? I I was just thinking about this. The final battle would look so different. Would we be on Vecna's side? No, I don't imagine we'd be on Vecna's side. I think eventually we would have broke away from Ascended Corp. Eventually, Cade would have given us enough information to be like, all right, guys, like it's time to separate yourself from the big bad guys. Now we're rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Let's see what money can buy us. But no, I don't think that we would have been, we wouldn't have gathered all these big leaders. We wouldn't have had these armies fighting against their armies. I don't know how he would have built the final battle but I don't think it would have been big armies against big armies because we wouldn't have had those allies we would have spent so much time with Ascended Corp I don't think we would have met as many people as we did I agree that's a really valid point I honestly wonder if it would have just gotten straight to the point of like the group trying to fight Vecna directly Mm -hmm. and maybe like dismantling it from the inside a little bit because I do think there was no way they would have stuck by Vecna in the long run or Avani and and Ascended Corp but I do think that the final battle would have looked totally different and I think it could have been a lot more trying to dismantle things slowly and then going after her rather than this is going to be one giant huge thing (laughs) where we're getting everyone you bring your guys I bring my guys we fight on the schoolyard at noon (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) A lot of things had to come into play to actually, like, summon Vecna and to, like, change everything. Like, Lathander had to die. The phones had to, like, be activated or something with them. I'm not sure exactly, but I'm sure you guys would have found more of the intricate details. And so, yeah, I kind of see, like, maybe you would have ended up having more of a battle over the actual, like, summoning thing of Vecna Mm -hmm. or be able to like contain it into like a more direct battle with her rather than this huge like good versus evil global scale yeah global battle battle over the badlands internal within the company and people Mm -hmm. affected yeah well Cade what would have happened had we stayed with Ascended Corp 
maybe I am showing my hand too much by uh, releasing some of this. This isn't. I, I could. I could give you so much. Campaign Just two. Give it all. Went zero percent like I anticipated it to. <laughs> yeah. Certain portions of it, I guess. Maybe like ten percent of it went the oh way that boy. I planned it to be. Brooke actually uh, convinced me otherwise because initially the overarching campaign. You know the anime Sword Art Online. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so in Sword Art Online, they go to sleep and they're in uh, like an alternative universe and they're fighting in like this video game style thing. I was going to have that happen, but with the mech suits that Professor Pistachio was creating during the punch bowl fight with Grom that you guys actually ended up killing Professor Pistachio. Had Grom not been able to fix all of the people, everyone who died, their bodies would have been absorbed into mech suits. And those mech suits was going to be uh, your mission, quote unquote, that Professor Pistachio was going to give you guys and saying like, hey, we don't know what's going on in this forest over here. Don't even get me started because that forest was also going to lead you guys to a place called New Grimbopolis. You guys never found that portion. Oh, <laughs> That's why. That. I'm pissed. Hey, hey, oh, I'm, I'm, writing it, pissed. I'm writing it down right now. There's too Future much. Future episode is going to be on. New, New Grumbopolis. Oh, I am so upset that we never went there. Dude, that sounds so cool. That's and so So wild. you guys were going to be fighting mech suits of people who were basically trapped in these, like their souls were trapped in these mech suits that you guys were going to be fighting against thinking like, oh my gosh, these guys are evil. But they're in a video game, essentially. It was just this whole big thing when you guys left that i was like and control delete like <laughs> well you guys are quitting right now love that for you love that <laughs> uh but <laughs> so you expected us to stay with ascended longer i expected you to stay with ascended longer the point that i thought you guys would turn was actually when you met river because River was Dude, going that to was have like way later. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> because intrigue. I anticipated because River had the connection to Ephemia and Ephemia's mother, but you guys were going to find out that he was using Seldarine Avenger technology to assist Ascended Corp in nefarious activities, which is what he was doing before you guys met him. But because you guys had already kind of like left Ascended Corp at that point, I was just like, and pivot. River is now less of a big bad. I mean, obviously he's a big enough bad to be the uh, preliminary course to Vecna, but uh, before this, it was going to be River as like the tertiary big bad, Professor Pistachio as the preliminary big bad, and then Vecna still being the big bad. So I think the 10% that went the same is that Vecna is still going to be the big bad overall of Ascended Corp, but obviously things got a little bit murky along the way. Basically, had we stayed with Ascended Corp, we would have actually followed your writing. <laughs> <laughs> it would have just saved you a ton of time. When did you guys leave Ascended Corp? I mean, right after the sewer. I mean, as soon as we were in the Underdark, yeah. we like officially were like, we're done with this. Exactly. And had you not uh, had saved the Dega brothers, I mean, you would have committed the heinous act of, of killing the Dega brothers who were completely innocent. They were, they were literally just people hired by Ascended Corp who were starting a union and Ascended Corp were like, no any whiff of a union were killing and so they were planning on you guys killing the Dega brothers to in essence kill the union but because you didn't the union lived on the trains got shut down like you guys moved up the time clock for the campaign i could have seen had you guys stayed with ascended corp campaign two could have gone 100 episodes but it would have been almost like a prolonged version of what you guys have already done you guys did you guys sped ran through uh, certain portions because of how well you were able to deduce my like hints basically of like oh yeah they're kind of bad and you guys are like kind of bad means really bad and i'm like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so we crushed it marissa crushed it. brooke um i am giving you behind the screens inspiration 
<laughs> because we crushed it. Yes. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us this week on Behind the Screens. We hope you all enjoyed this deep dive into the realm of Knocked Prone and look forward to answering more of your burning questions. Until next time. Amen. <laughs> Just flexing on everybody. And thus it was. <laughs> and Jesus wept. <laughs>